Welcome to A Word from Our Outpost with Joseph and Crystal Gruber, a podcast for Catholic disciples who are wrestling to be missionary-minded in their normal, everyday lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Welcome to A Word from Our Outpost. This is Joseph Gruber, half of Our Outpost, half of the podcast. And I am delighted to be with you, as always. Thank you for listening. Today I wanted to talk to you about a question that I've asked people for years and years and years, and things that I've learned and things that I wish that I would have done better. The question that I've been asking for years and years and years is, what have you been reading recently? What have you been reading recently? It's a good question for a lot of different reasons. And it's an awkward question for people who don't read. So I'm going to begin this by telling a bit of a story. We were on a team of Catholic missionaries out west for several years. And one of the years we were having a team breakfast. Most most uh, teams in the organization we worked for would have a weekly get-together that's more informal uh, more relaxed for that particular team doing like a breakfast brunch kind of thing fit everybody's schedule best. So we did a team breakfast. We also had our chaplain along too, because he was wonderful. And throughout the course of the, the breakfast each week, I would usually get around to asking each one of my teammates and their spouses, if they were married, what they've been reading recently. And it was really cool hearing what people were reading, what they were being influenced by. You know, one person had a deep devotion to St. Therese of Lisieux. Another person was reading about uh, some basics in prayer. Uh, Father Jacques Philippe was always a popular author. And uh, it, 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 was, it was neat to sort of get a temperature of the room about what people were interacting with. And one person didn't have an answer most weeks. They, they just weren't reading. That was not high on their list of priority. It wasn't a thing that was culturally all that normal to be doing. I'm okay with not being culturally normal. Uh, in fact, I, I like to change the culture. I, I want to change the culture. The culture is crying out to be changed by people who love and who, who are willing to, to be awkward. And so throughout the course of my time with that team, the answer was just very usually nothing from that particular person. And in the years since, we've kept up with these teammates, and I would see this teammate from time to time, and they would say, ask me the question. And I'd, I'd say, well, what, what have you been reading recently? And then they would answer. They would, they would before I even finish the question, they would, they would answer. They, they'd been reading. They were tired after spending the time with me of not having an answer about reading, I, I think seeing that other people were reading was also helpful. And so they, this person made it a challenge to themselves to, to read, to, to pick a book and to read. And I was just talking to uh, a, the spouse of that teammate, uh, the spouse, I don't, I don't know if this is actually all that important that I keep gender and, and all that secret. Okay, so I was talking to the husband, the, my, my male teammate from that uh, time period, and uh, he was saying that his wife, this one who hadn't been reading for, for a long time, uh, had set a goal this year to read 15 pages a day from three different books every day. And her goal was to read 40 books by the end of the year. And ladies and gentlemen, the year is not yet even three quarters of the way over. And at the time of that conversation with my friend, she was at book 39. She had read 39 books since the beginning of calendar year 2024. That's amazing. That is a lot of excellent reading. She was reading books about business, books about her faith, books for enjoyment, and she was reading. So, one, asking this question can be really awkward if nobody is reading. But it sparks something. It, it can spark an interest in reading. And then, so, why is that important? 
Well, here's, here's one of the crazy things about reading. I think it was Carl Sagan who has this quote about reading, is that uh, you're reading the thoughts of someone else whenever you read. It, it's a kind of telepathy. And not just a kind of telepathy that allows you to read the, the mind of someone in the present moment, which is what we usually think about telepathy. Like, I'm on one side of the room, somebody else is on the other side of the room, and I can read what they're thinking right then and there. Or, you know, a Vulcan mind melt where you can, you know, find out what they're thinking right then and there. The immediacy, the present moment is, is forefront when we're thinking about telepathy. And that's not what reading is. Reading is being able to read the best thoughts of someone. Whatever somebody said, these are the thoughts that are worth writing down. The way that I have been able to encapsulate a, a particular view on something, the way that I've been able to tell a particular tale, I have found worth etching into something more permanent and passing on to someone so that just by the, the perception of symbols, they'll be able to know what I was thinking. At the, in case you couldn't tell, at one point or another, I drifted away from my paraphrase of Carl Sagan and went into an explanation of the Carl Sagan paraphrase. And I don't think I even finished the Carl Sagan paraphrase, but it was essentially about how reading is like telepathy over time, which is a really cool way to think about it. Uh, they talk about, there's this quote about, you know, a, a, a hero lives uh, or a hero only dies once and a coward dies a thousand lives, a thousand times, something like that. I did not look up quotes before I pressed record. I hope nobody is offended at this point. Here we are. You know, a coward has but uh, will die a thousand times and a hero only dies once. Um, but this idea that the man who reads can live a thousand lives whereas the man who doesn't has access only to his own thoughts, his own life, his own perspective. This, this is an amazing thing, the, the putting together of books. We are drowning in books now. We are, we are inundated with potential books. But that doesn't mean that some of them aren't worth reading and that they might change our lives. You know, I... I won't know somebody else's experience unless they tell me. And one of the ways that they tell me is by writing it down and then, you know, selling it on the, in the marketplace. So access to a perspective on life that I would not have access to otherwise. There's this sense too, that we can be better informed about the world, both over time and the immediate world by, by reading, by by reading books about what is going on or what has happened, right? Like when we're conditioned to read articles and even from articles to headlines and blurbs, we're missing out on so much context. We're missing out on so much detail. And one of the cool things about a well-written, well-researched book is that they're bringing together all of these other things for us so that we don't have to right then and there. There's a certain amount of trust in that process, but it is an amazing, amazing gift for somebody to say, I will spend a year of my life, I will spend three years of my life becoming an expert in this so that I can deliver to you the most essential pieces. So that's really cool. There's something that is revealed when people are reading a book, they're revealing their their purpose, they're revealing what they want, they're revealing what they want to become. Matthew Kelly has this expression, you know, uh, show me the, the next five books that somebody's going to read and I show you, I'll show you the man he will become, something like that. Again, did not research quotes. Matthew Kelly says many things. This was one of them. Uh, but this idea that if I know what you're reading, I have some glimpse into who it is you're trying to become. And so that is a really cool thing that can be answered by what are you reading right now? I have been trying to absorb Diedrich von Hildebrandt and his philosophy for a while now, in part because I feel like the market is sort of glutted with John Paul II's personalism, and I want to, you know, 
be a little bit more unique uh, for that for that kind of area. Uh, but two, I, I very, 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 very much respect and admire Diedrich von Hildebrandt's approach to what it is to be human and how to live and how to perceive ourselves and God and the world. And I want to be more like that. So if I'm saying I'm reading Diedrich von Hildebrand, I'm not trying to be impressive, except insofar as I want to be like him. I'm saying I'm not like him now, that's why I'm reading him, but I would like to think more like he does. I would like to see more like how he sees. And so when I read him, that's what I'm saying to the world if I say that that's what I'm reading. Versus if I'm reading a, a fantasy novel, I might be saying, I, I need a break. And that's a good thing to know. Uh, breaks are good, right? Like Tolkien was asked if it was a problem writing escapist literature. He's like, escape is actually sometimes your duty when you're imprisoned. So if I'm reading escapist literature, that might be a sign. Like, am I trying to get away from something? Am I trying to get perspective on something? Am I in, 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 in search of adventure? Or am I afraid of a, an adventure? Or are some fantasy writers really, really good and engaging and have beautiful prose or wonderful world building? These are things you can find out. All that to say, this question, what are we reading? What are you reading? It reveals a lot. It is awkward, especially if we have no idea if, they, if the person is reading. So I, sometimes if I don't know the person very well at all, I'll make it as expansive as possible. I'll say, have you been reading anything good recently? Um, it's also an interesting thing adding that that qualifier anything good because there's all sorts of bad stuff out there. There there are the the romance novel genre. There's all sorts of just bad literature out there, and some people read it. Apparently, it's out there. Somebody must be reading it. And one of the things this is one of the reasons why um, Fifty Shades of Grey became so popular. It was with the advent of the Kindle, so it became a popular book, especially because it was popular insofar as people could read it without other people knowing that they were reading it. And this is a thing. Sometimes we might be embarrassed about what we're reading. That might be a sign we should not be reading it. it it's probably a good sign that if I walk along and say, hey, what have you been reading recently? And you don't want to mention a particular book. That might be a sign that that's not the kind of book that you want because whatever it is you're reading does come into your life. Whatever it is you're reading does percolate into how you speak and how do you think and how you act. And so if you say, well, I, I've been reading something, but maybe I really shouldn't have. It's like, well, then, yeah, I, I would say don't read that read something better okay it's awkward to ask it is indicative of the kind of life they're living perhaps and the kind of life that they would like to be living when people give an answer about what they've been reading uh it also here here is another facet of asking people what they're reading is to follow up a question with the question, would you recommend it? Would you recommend reading what you're reading right now or reading the book that you just finished? If the answer is no, that's a really interesting thing for them to ponder and for you to ponder. Like, okay, my friend reads books that they don't think would be for me. Now, maybe that's because they're reading, you know, uh, more research oriented books. You know, I have, I have friends who, when I ask them what they're reading, they say technical manuals, technical manuals. Like, okay, I don't want to read technical manuals. You are right. Uh, but if you're saying, oh, it was like some thriller novel, I don't really recommend it. Well, maybe, maybe that's a sign. And I'm not saying go out there and shame people for what they're reading. But I am saying go with a, an expectant attitude that people might be reading something good that is worthwhile. And if that's not what you're finding, that's not on you. That That is something for them to discern. But they probably won't discern it if nobody's asking them what they're reading. 
Another cool thing about asking someone what they're reading, if it's something that they're passionate about, it will unlock really cool conversation. Or if it's a book that you've read before, or even a book that you're reading right now, or a book that you're intending to read, it can unlock really cool conversation. You don't have to agree with everything that you've read. You don't have to agree with anything, everything that other people have read. But you can wrestle with it. You can you can say, you know, this is how this particular atheist writer was presenting, you know, the purpose of life. And here's what I found problematic about this. You know, I I would love to find someone who has actually read Ready Player Two. I did have the misfortune of reading the whole thing. And one of the reasons I, I pushed through, uh, well, one, I was hoping that maybe just maybe the author would have had some real epiphany at some point. But the other reason I read it was if anyone else has read this book, this would be a fascinating conversation to have with them because there are all sorts of weird and disturbing things that the author didn't even really understand, perhaps, that were weird and disturbing. I would be delighted to talk to somebody about Ready Player Two at some point. It's been uh, maybe a couple of years since I've read it, so I might need a little bit of a refresher. And yet, the the main ideas of it are still fresh enough that I would be able to to discuss. I think if you struggle to have good conversation, I'm not going to say this is a great conversation starter. Sometimes it's been a complete dud. I'm not going to say that it should become your go-to question. Maybe it shouldn't. But I am going to say that from time to time, especially for some people, asking them what they've been reading might bring them out of their shell, might be their permission to enter into the conversation more fully, might be an opportunity for you to see an aspect of someone that you wouldn't have any insight into otherwise. I, I think it's a good question. It's It's one of those... It, it, I, I've been, I, well, let me back up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, dear listener in the singular. I, I've i been revisiting some of my go-to questions recently. I was a, a Catholic missionary for years and years, and there were certain conversation starters that I just enjoyed. My first two years as a Catholic missionary, I began most conversations with strangers on the college campus with, excuse me, would you please answer a question for me? It's of some import. Could you tell me, if you please, how much a polar bear weighs? And they would cock their head to the side, and they would think, and I would say, enough to break the ice. Hi, I'm Joseph. Granted, back in the day, I went by the name of Joey, but Joseph now. I stopped using that at some point because it was a little gimmicky. It was hilarious, and it went over pretty swimmingly with most people, but it was a little gimmicky, and so I set it to the side. Another question that I've asked and i'm now kind of trying to figure out where its place is in conversation is what's your story because usually it that's a question that gets met with confusion and that might be worth unpacking over its own episode because i feel like this idea of conversation starters and and conversation prompts could be an episode in and of itself but as i've been evaluating these questions one of the questions I've been evaluating is, what have you been reading recently? And I was, I was thinking about putting it on the chopping block, ladies and gentlemen, until a phone call just yesterday with a friend whose wife now reads 39 books in the space of, what, eight, nine months, something like that. That's transformative. That is amazing. That is beyond belief awesome. And this is not the only story of people who have started to read, because I've asked about, what have you been reading recently? And it's amazing, because when they do start reading, they get excited. They get excited both about the reading and about seeing me again. And that, maybe, maybe if nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the, the reason to ask this question, is if you ever do prompt someone to go from not reading to reading, they will be excited to see you and tell you. And you will have a chance to be proud of them. And you will have a chance to commend them and be interested in what they chose. Because what they chose is particularly meaningful because they're beginning the habit of reading. And in beginning the habit of reading, they have to be oh so intentional. 
and they have to find things that are going to be interesting enough to help them to to finish which means that they're more likely to, going to be picking things that are going to be closer to their hearts which is an awesome thing to hear about so all that to say i i think it's a decent question i think if you if you want to try it out a few times i would love to hear how it goes please 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 tell me email us at hello at our outpost.org tell me hey i asked this question at uh the oh i i don't know where you might see at the dinner table of my spouse i asked this question at a work lunch i asked this question at a networking event i asked this question on a first date however it went i would love to hear i would love to hear stories about people asking other people what they've been reading and then following up with good intentional questions about what they've been learning, about why they picked it, about whether or not they would recommend it, about how it has shaped what they're doing or thinking or how they're even existing in the world. Please, please tell me. Hello at outpost.org. Also, while you're on the computer, please rate and review this podcast. This also exists on YouTube. We're trying to build a little bit of a YouTube audience because apparently most you. Uh, most podcasts are listened to on YouTube, which I missed that memo. I still listen to podcasts on the Apple Podcast app, so I'm behind the times, and that's okay. I don't have to be at the head of the curve on everything. So we're on YouTube. We're on everywhere that podcasts exist, um, and, and we would like to grow our audience. We want to serve the people who want to be served by us. We're trying to put out content. It helps you to live out a fuller, richer Catholic life, rich in the sense of joy and peace and um, like a rich apostolate, right? like a rich harvest. We, we want to help people to be truly missionary disciples. I know that's a buzzword. I don't think we use it in a buzzwordy way in that we know what that means. And we're really trying to be intentional about how we're living out our life and how we're encouraging others to live as well. So pass this podcast along send it along to somebody and ask them, so what have you been reading recently? Um, the other thing, as far as hearing from you, I'm going to put this pitch out again. If you are Catholic and married and a man, so a Catholic husband, I would love to hear from you. In particular, we started a marriage ministry about a year and a half ago. In that marriage ministry, we put out things particularly for husbands and particularly for wives. So workshops and retreat days and um, so far, no podcast particular to husbands or wives, but we do have a podcast particularly to Catholic married couples. It's called Love Your Marriage. Uh, shorter episodes, hopefully helpful and informative and good food for thought for, for spouses to listen to. Anyway, if you're a Catholic husband, if I could have 45 minutes of your time to hear how things are going, what resources you have, what your goals are, what obstacles you've faced, and I would be able to do some good listening. I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, just a brother in Christ. I'd be able to do some good listening and hopefully find out what would be of most value for the men that we invite to any of the things that we're doing. That would be helpful to me. What I found is that good listening can be helpful for almost anyone. So I would be delighted to take that time with you. A link to that will be in the show notes, in the description or whatever the app calls it wherever you're listening to this or watching it um so please avail yourself of that if you are a catholic husband if you're a catholic wife maybe have your catholic husband talk with me if that would make sense uh we emailed out about this recently and and my wife crystal she uh she mentioned that the only people who clicked on the link because apparently we can figure out who clicks on links were all of the married women and none of the married men for the link to sign up for time to talk to me in particular my calendar is opened up for that crystal her calendar has gotten a lot more narrowed in focus since the school year began and we're homeschooling three kids now so i am much more available also by sort of how it time extends so link to that will be in the show notes this will still be sufficiently before October 19th when this comes out. 
Joseph Pierce, noted Catholic author and speaker, is coming to Jackson, Michigan. If you're anywhere near Jackson, Michigan, or might be on October 19th, that's a Saturday, he'll be coming to give a talk at the Chesterton Academy of St. George, an incredible classical high school in the Catholic tradition. You can RSVP for that. That's helpful for us in terms of uh, getting refreshments and the like. Joseph Pierce will also be available to hang out afterwards. Uh, depending on the weather, we might have a fire going or we might just be in the cafeteria. Who knows? Um, but I'm really excited about that. As one of the founders and now the president of the board for the Chesterton Academy, it is delightful to be able to bring such a resource to our town. Okay. I think that's it. If you also just want to let me know what you've been reading, I would find it delightful. I might not be able to answer everybody if if everybody inundates me with what they've been reading recently, but I I would find that to be delightful. That would be a, a great boon to me to hear what our audience is actually reading. Because again, that tells me a lot about you and your interests and your uh, purposes and the things you want to be influenced by. And that's not a bad thing unless we are choosing bad things to read. And with that, we'll pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From our outpost to yours, thanks for listening. And a special thanks to John Mark Skoke. That's S-K-O-C-H. For the music. Check him out on Spotify. 